Today's topic is chronic loneliness in the elderly. Um, it's a, something that uh, since COVID has began, of course, now uh, is more prevalent more than ever. And um, it's something that it, here we are trying to protect our seniors. And in the midst of protecting our seniors, um, we have left them alone and, and loneliness now is, is on the top of a, a lot of issues for a lot of our seniors. So we're gonna talk about that today. Um, loneliness can affect every part of your life. Um, if you have ever been lonely, you know that it can impact your happiness. Loneliness can also increase your risk for many health problems. Um, understanding the causes of loneliness and the best approaches for dealing with it uh, can help you overcome the issue. Sadly, many residents uh, today of, that are elderly um, are lonely. Um, physicians are now starting to pay attention to their older patients, um, what their social networks, and learning how to improve this aspect of their lives. In the U.S., not only does loneliness take a tragic toll on the personal lives of millions of older Americans, but it also comes at a financial cost. An AARP study on loneliness calculated Medicare spends about $134 more a month, every single month, for every lonely senior um, than for seniors who are socially connected. The cost add up uh, $6.7 billion of extra spending each year. And with the number of adults over the age of 65 expected to double uh, between uh, 2016 and 2060, the costs are gonna continue to rise. So America has a lot of incentive to address the problems of loneliness by supporting more research and creating additional resources uh, to help our seniors. Um, because everyone is different, we can't really quantify loneliness in terms of the number of friends a person has um, or the amount of time he or she spends alone is all about how a person uh, feels. So you could have that outgoing person, that outgoing person with that great personality and um, they could be extremely lonely even though they're going out on social occasions and you could have the introvert who's very happy staying at home um, and, and, and they don't have any kind of loneliness because they're very content with, with being by themselves. So it's really just a personal thing for each individual. Um, so how is loneliness measured by a mental health professional? Researchers at UCLA devised a short uh, loneliness test that asked people to rate their feelings on a number of factors. So these are some of the factors that um, they ask people about. Um, excluded, totally alone, unable to talk to anyone, challenged in making new friends, unable to put up with being alone, unable to get others to understand them, anxious for others to contact them, um, unable to connect with those around them, and unhappy when doing things by themselves. Um, the UCLA Loneliness Scale is now frequently used in studies of loneliness. Uh, mental health professionals sometimes distinguish between social loneliness, which is missing a wide social network, and probably a little more heart-wrenching is the emotional loneliness. Um, that's missing a spouse or a partner. Uh, lots of times people have been married 30, 40, 50, 60 years, and so when that par partner um, you know, passes away, um, it's a great shock, and it, and it takes a lot for, for people to rebound from that. Uh, the loss of that significant partner is, is a big trigger for loneliness. 47% um, of older adults who have lost a partner in the last five years identify as lonely, according to the, that AARP study. So um, that's a big, big issue, and I, I have seen that. So. Um, some interesting survey, survey results, about 35% of adults over the age of 45 are lonely. That's about 47.8 million people. It seems that the more we're connected um, by way of, of phone and internet, sometimes it seems like we're even more lonely than, than ever before. Overall, 29% of married older couples are lonely compared to 51% 
who are single, no surprise there. But here is an interesting fact that the quality of the relationship impacts whether a person experiences loneliness. 26% of older adults in happy relationships are lonely compared to 48% who are in or who are not in a happy relationship. So that's an interesting fact. Um, income, no surprise here, can also play a major role uh, for older people uh, that have an annual income of less than 25,000 are lonely. Seniors who are caregivers are more likely to be lonely. Um, those caregivers that are caring for someone with Alzheimer's or dementia um, tend to become almost shut-ins. Um, and it's a very lonely experience uh, being a caregiver sometimes. You're, you're usually on your own. Um, why are so many older adults feeling lonely today? Um, here are three factors that come into play. Um, a lack of social connections. Uh, many of the AARP stats point to the fact that it's the quality, not the quantity, of our social interactions that counts. Um, for example, although one might think that being retired would contribute to feeling lonely, retired people are actually less likely to be lonely than people who are still working for the simple fact that they now have time for social events. Um, here's another insight. Uh, loneliness seems to be contagious. So if you are surrounded by people who feel lonely, you probably are also going to feel lonely. Uh, this is not surprising here, uh, living alone. Um, but what is surprising is this stat, about 28% of older adults live uh, alone compared to just 6% in the 1900s. Um, that's a huge swing, huge swing. And since women tend to live longer than men, uh, by the age of 75, about 45% of women are living alone. Uh, declining health um, makes uh, many older adults feel lonely just from the decline in social outings due to their decline in health. <clears throat> when is loneliness a problem? Here's some warning signs. Um, sudden neglect of hygiene and personal care. Lack of motivation. Uh, mysterious mysterious um, aches and pains um, tend to come because they're, they're looking for that attention. Um, a noticeable increase in negative thinking, a drop in energy levels, a decline in social interest, um, a, ch a change in reaching out to uh, you or loved ones, um, an increase in activities that may be a way to cope with being uh, lonely, um, such as uh, Shopping, over shopping, overeating, or increased use of drugs or alcohol. Uh, this this is a pretty sad fact. Um, an increase in hot baths or showers, which can act as a substitute for the warmth of human contact. That's, that's pretty sad. Um, on next week's show, uh, it's going to be part two, and we're going to talk about solutions for seniors who are feeling lonely. Um, and there are some solutions. You know, this, this is another point where the families need to be involved. Um, they need to be paying attention. It's, it's wonderful that you're keeping your family safe from COVID, but you have to remember that isolation um, and non-social contact um, really can, not only loneliness, but can, it can uh, turn into a depression. Um, so while you're keeping your family members safe, Remember that they need interaction. Um, everyone needs a hug. Everyone needs human contact. Um, it, it, it's what makes us humans. So that's something to take away. Uh, the takeaway, if a senior experiences any type of personal loss, this is, this is where they lose um, a, a child, if they lose a spouse, um, and this includes the, the loss of a pet. Uh, many people are very, very close to their pets, uh, me included, and, and would go through a period of mourning if, if the loss of my pet occurred. Um, that's when people need that little extra TLC. They need that little extra love and attention um, if they're staying at home. Recently moving. Um, that happens sometimes when people come here to the Lantern. 
Um, they, you know, they haven't met anybody yet. They haven't made any friends yet. Um, and there's that little period of loneliness. Um, so that's where activities comes into play here. Uh, therapy comes into play. You know, we try to give everybody that little extra TLC, um, you know, at, at least for the first 30 days while they're here until they get their, their footings, until they make some friends. And then they really just, they don't need us anymore. And they, they kind of go off and they do their own thing. Um, the ability to drive a car. Um, nobody wants to lose that independence of driving a car. Um, lots of people get very angry about the loss of their car um, because it takes away their independence to actually go see someone. So if no one's coming to see them, they can at least get in that car and go see a friend, a neighbor, a relative, go to the store. Um, it, it's that in loss of independence that really can trigger loneliness. So if you see a friend or a loved one has experienced, experienced any of these events, um, that can reduce his or her social connections, you know, just reach out, you know, give a phone call, stop over, have a pie, you know, uh, try to make them feel like they have a purpose and they're important in your life. Um, also be alert to feelings of increased loneliness because addressing these feelings early on will help yourself <clears throat> and or your loved one since loneliness can get worse over time if not dealt with. 